Welcome to LLK number 30. That's Knit with Laura and Lola. I'm Laura Nelkin. I'm a knitwear designer. I live in upstate New York in the Finger Lakes region. And I am joined by my alter ego, Lola. Lola is a little bit more fun than I am. She's a little bit spicy. She always shows up in these logs. And we have a lot to tell you. I had kind of gotten into a regular thing of shooting one of these every other week. And then life happened. And frankly, the garden happened because it's finally spring here. And I've been pretty busy gardening and also working on the mystery knit along with y'all. So the logs suffered a tiny bit, but we're back at it. and. I think the way I can do these and have the best time with them is just make a log as the spirit moves me, which means sometimes they'll be coming out more regularly. Sometimes there'll be big, more weeks in between them. And whenever they happen, they will be fun and entertaining and something great to knit to. I'll be sharing with you what I'm knitting on, what's kind of going on with me in terms of designs coming down the pike or things that I'm working on. I um, will be sharing with you yarns. I've got some fun yarns to show you that have um, come my way in the last few weeks. I also love to share my local waterfall with you to Gannick, so there will be a State of the Falls episode in here. And then I always share with you kind of what I'm watching and listening and reading and eating, just like little bits of life to keep things fun. So I'm just, that kind of sets you up and I'm gonna jump right in. Um, this last weekend, I taught at Vogue Knitting Live Virtual, and when I finished teaching, it was fun. My students were amazing, and I can't believe how um, kind of normalized teaching online has become. And I work really hard when I teach online to create connections with my students, calling people by name, kind of getting to know them, seeing what's going on in their background, meeting their cats and their dogs or their husbands. Some people, husbands bring them coffee during class, which always makes me a little jealous. I would love a coffee fairy halfway through class. Um, hoping somebody hears that on the other side of this camera right now. We'll see, we'll see if that one ever works. <laughs> um, but anyway, teaching was a blast. And when I was done teaching on Sunday, I texted Max to be like, I'm all done. And then I looked at my calendar and I realized I'm not teaching again until August. And though I absolutely adore teaching, I am thrilled to have a summer break. My next gig for teaching, if it happens, and it seems like it's going to right now, is um, the Pittsburgh Knit and crochet show and that is in Pittsburgh and it's mid-August, it's on my website. This is a good time to tell you that everything I talk about today, if I have a link to it, I will put it below in the show notes. So you can go down there if I talk about like the dress I'm wearing or the shawl I'm wearing or anything else that's going on that I'm chatting about, I'll give you links below, books, etc. I feel like I have a bug on me, but I think it's just a hair because you guys, I have not gotten my hair cut since last September, and I feel a little bit, um, I love it, it's longer than it's ever been, but it is time for a little bit of a shedding. And I think I have an appointment for the, the first or second week of June, and I'm not gonna cut it a lot because I'm loving playing with this long length, but I'm ready, <laughs> ready for a little bit of somebody else brushing and washing my hair, I gotta tell ya. So, I feel like this log is gonna be a big old tease because I don't have anything, I have a few things to show you, but I've got a lot that's in the works and I'm having a great time with and like the sweater behind me, I'll tell you a little bit about. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it be, which I'm wearing. You'll notice a cuff happening on my, on my wrist. That should be out in the next week or two. It's a little extra surprise I've been working on for, um, I'm gonna say it, knitters and crocheters. There's a little tip for you right there. Um, first things first, Open Minds Mystery Knit Along is going amazing. We're already into clue number two. You all are having a great open mind. You are totally working with me as we figured stuff out. I was shocked by how many of you love spreadsheets as much as I love spreadsheets. The testers and I, when we were going through Open Minds, um, I forget which tester it was, it might've been Jennifer or Susie said, you know, that it would be really helpful to have a spreadsheet to keep track of the repeats in this clue. 
and we made one up kind of after they had already knit that clue. And people are really enjoying printing those out, downloading them, and then just kind of checking off each row as they go and making sure their stitch count is okay. So I wasn't gonna have a spreadsheet for clue two and clue three, but I decided that they were so helpful that I'm just gonna keep going with the spreadsheets until I feel like they're kind of extraneous and not needed. But if they're gonna help you keep track of your knitting, I am happy to make those for you. I love spreadsheets. I had to kind of pause and tell you how much I love a spreadsheet because my love is real and deep and I use them for many different things from grading or keeping track of bead colors and kits or like when I was making the open minds kits, kind of keeping track of how many different kits I was getting and what color and how many beads I needed to order. I always have a good 10 spreadsheets open on my computer at a time, which gets a little crazy, but I'm trying to find the right one, but it works out for me. Um, so open minds, keep going with it, keep asking questions. What I love about doing mystery knit alongs, and um, it's interesting, I, I forgot this piece of it. When I first drop a clue, like the day before a clue drops, things get very busy as everybody's trying to finish their clue, and then the people who haven't quite gotten their clue done yet are kind of like reporting in to be like, yeah, I tried, it didn't happen, I'll catch up. And then people are posting their finished clues and they're all excited and kind of guessing what's gonna happen in the next clue and that's really fun too. And then the next morning when I drop the clue, it gets very quiet. And the reality is everybody's downloading their pattern, they're like making sure all the links work, they're looking for the spreadsheets, they're watching the video. They don't really have anything to say until you've kind of like digested the information of the next clue. So I always like drop the clue and I know that I can walk away for a little while and like go have second breakfast or go make another cup of coffee or go knit outside for a little while because it'll take a tiny bit for those questions to come in. But the first day of a clue, I'm always very on it. I'm very um, present for the first at least 24 hours because if any questions come up in that first chunk of time and I can answer them well and correctly, it means you all know the answers and I find what happens with the mystery knit along is you all start to, as a community, help each other. And I'm not as necessary to be like the primary source of information. And watching this kind of like community driven knit along take shape is so cool. And I, I just forgot that piece of the puzzle and how much I love it. And I'm already kind of thinking about what a future mystery knit along could be down the line. I'm never gonna go back to four a year. That was too much for any human to do. But I think going back to at least once one a year is a, um, is a, a doable goal for myself for sure. Um, so that's kind of open minds in a nutshell. Your thongs are looking beautiful. And um, I think someone referred to clue one as maybe more of a diaper than a thong. And you know, right on, whatever. Whatever floats your boat on that one. Um, next up, Lola's Choice. Um, the May Lola's Choice kit shipped at the beginning of May. I do have a few kits left, so I'm leaving it open as long as I can before I roll over to July signups. I already have the yarn for July. I am super excited about July's kit. I've been excited about every kit coming down the pike, but July's one I've been working up to for a while. So I am wearing May's Lola's Choice kit. Lola's Choice is my small knitted kit club who is run by my alter ego, Lola, in case you didn't know that. And It Be is knit with Dando Cotton Fine, which is a cotton tape yarn. The pattern for It Be has about a 40, 45 minute video for it. So you can follow along with that video and I teach you all the tips and tricks you need to know for working with the cotton yarn. One thing I wanted to mention here for those of you already knitting It Be, if you notice that your yarn overs are jumping, over your stitch markers. If you use a shaped stitch marker, like a teardrop ship, mar um, ship marker, <laughs> or a triangular one, or a star one, it's much harder for the yarn overs to jump. And I'll give you guys a link below to this place, um, 
frippin' bibelots where I get my tear-shaped stitch markers that work really well for situations like that. So the link below is for those if you don't, if you feel like you have more traditional round stitch markers and you need some shaped ones to keep those yarn overs in line. So it'd be, I think coming down the pike, I am working on a larger size. So the shawl that I'm wearing, this small size, is one skein of yarn. And I also have a large one that, um, Lissa helped me knit and I just have to block it, but it's kind of cool to show this to you unblocked. So this uses two skeins of the Dando Cotton Fine. Um, I really love it. This is my spirit color. This is my favorite color. I'm very excited to have it to wear this summer. Cotton yarns are really nice to wear in the spring, summer and early fall for shawls. And I'm happy to have this one in my collection. And you'll see that again once it's blocked. I do have a photo shoot coming Memorial Day weekend. So I'm like knitting and trying to finish stuff like the Dickens so that I have the Lola's Choice pattern done and um, also working on Third Winter, which you guys saw in the last log. This got put away for a little while because I had to focus on a few other things. But Third Winter, I'm working this in some Feederbrook Farm sport weight that I have extras of in my studio. And it's matched with Jill Draper Make Stuff Ansel in this kind of like awesome dark earthy brown. And I absolutely, absolutely adore the way the brioche is showing up on this hat. So um, this pattern, if you remember from the last log, is quite scrunchy. So although if I was making a fitted hat, I would be done right now and I could do the top decreases. I like it like to fall back on my head. It is too hot tonight to have that on my head for long. Um, and I lost a few stitches, so I'm gonna get them back on my needles so I can knit with you. Um, so I'm gonna go to about like nine and a half inches, I think, on this before I get to the point. Sorry, getting them on. I really like to knit when I'm talking to you before I get to those decreases. And that will be ready for next weekend as well. Um, I kind of teased something going on on my wrist. I'll put it back down again. That will be out in the next week, I would say. Um, its name is Mingle, because crocheters and knitters like to mingle together. I've got to thank my friend Natasha for helping me think of that name I was having. A heart. I think I was calling it the Wu Eat Cuff, which made absolutely no sense at all. And then over here on Goldie, you can see part of a new sweater that is, it's not named yet, it's almost named. If you have any great ideas for a summer sweater name, you're welcome to drop them below in the comments anytime. But I'm working on a name for it and what is interesting with this sweater is I had some help knitting it. I knit half of it and I got some, some help knitting it. And um, the yarn that I used, I don't think is going to be available. So I have another yarn coming to knit up another sample just to give some options for yarns to give you guys ideas of different yarns that will work for it. And for the first time, I'm not grading my own pattern. And I passed on the grading to a friend who, could, who needed a little work. And the reason that I did that, and it's kind of, I think it's interesting, or I think it's interesting. I don't know if you think it, it's totally interesting to me, um, is I'm trying to do the things I love to do, like we all are in life. And I actually love grading. I love taking a sweater I've written for one size and grading it up and down, but it's hard and it takes a lot of time and a lot of like, really focused, concentrated energy, which I haven't had a ton of lately. And I realized that I am loving interacting with you guys so much. I'm loving doing these logs. I'm loving being with you in the Facebook group and in the Ravelry group. And that distracts me from those kind of like really intensive, intellectually taxing tasks. So when I looked at like, what could I give up and what could I have somebody do? I was like, I don't think anybody else could do the, the forum interaction the way that I, that I love to do it. Like, it just feels weird not to do that with you. So I decided maybe I could pass off the grading and still keep that interaction piece. And I'm glad, I think that that's gonna work well and it's just gonna, I'm getting some different perspectives on grading, which I really appreciate in terms of like shoulder width and getting the, 
sleeve cap to be just the way the sleeve cap is on this. I'm purposefully not showing you a lot of what's going on on Goldie right now to keep this a little bit of a secret. Goldie is also wearing a Lucetta in butter because I got those back in stock in the shop. And I just love the elongating lines of Lucetta on that sweater. So they match each other super well. I think that's kind of everything I I'm knitting. Like there's so much on my needles right now. The end club is like almost done. That's in the middle of testing. That's one of the things that's getting photographed next weekend. Same with Lola's Choice, etc. Lots, Lots on the plate right now that I can't show you, which is frustrating. So you get a very, very, the world's slowest knit hat, third winter happening. Yarn wise, I've had some fun yarn happen lately. I got a present from my friend at Gage Dye Works. She, I don't know if you know Gage Dye Works. Some of you probably do. Gage Dye Works does self-striping yarn. So Catherine is just like this wizard at taking a spreadsheet and creating a yarn that creates a striping sequence if you get gauge at the striping sequence. Like she's figured out the math based on your stitches per inch to get that strike striping losing my words, that striping sequence. So um, I worked with Catherine to do um, Five For You, which was an M Club pattern years ago. And I also worked with Catherine to do a, a self-striping yarn for Flozaic. And that was a cowl or a poncho that had a self-striping sequence that started out with striping at the top and then went to a gradient at the bottom. And both of those collaborations were incredibly fun and interesting. And I've been trying to get her to do something with me again, but she's super busy. And one of the reasons she's busy is she's like, I'm starting to leave time to do the ideas that I've had. Right? Like she has all these ideas of things that she could do and hasn't had time to do them because she keeps saying yes to other people. So she sent me this yarn that was her latest idea, which was basically doing a, um, a dyed solar system. So I can hold this up just so you can see it a little bit. Basically, it goes from the sun to Pluto and she figured out the distance for all of the planets and made them all different colors as she stripes out to Pluto. So this is like an exact mathematical representation of the solar system, which is, I mean, any geek would just absolutely love this all the way to the moon and back. I just said that. Um, that was embarrassing. <laughs> Um, so there's two versions of yarn that she sent me. One is a one way. So the stripe just goes from the sun to Pluto. And then the other one is um, a round trip where you could make a pair of socks or mittens or leg warmers. Um, and I just think they're both so fun. It's the exact same color, but they just behave two different ways. And I think I'm gonna use the round trip and make myself a pair of really fun leg warmers because I love wearing leg warmers in the winter and I would love just like a fun stripey pair of leg warmers for myself. I wish I had a sock machine for that. I might try to see if there's somebody out there who has one who could help me crank them out. And then the one way is going to be your giveaway at the end of this log. So watch all the way through. Don't skip to the end, I'll know if you did. There's like, little YouTube police who know things like that. Um, the other yarn <laughs> that I got recently was from Kelborn Woolens. It's called Camper. I love it because it has a VW bus on it. And for those of you who've known me over the years, you know that I've had a VW bus probably since I was almost 20. I had my first VW bus and I had a little break in there. Max and I have a newer one. It's a Eurovan and we camp in it every summer. And so how could I not love a yarn with the camper on it? It is the fingering weight version of Kelborn Woolen's Sport. It is a 100% wool. It is squishy and yummy. The colors are really interesting. They're kind of like deep and heathered. I already did some swatching with it. I have an idea that I'm very excited about to do with it. And um, that won't happen until the fall or beyond. Um, but, and I don't know. The look at the colors, so good. So they sent me a color card so I could kind of get ideas for all of those colors that they come in 
And um, your local yarn store will pro probably have this. And if they don't, ask them to get it because it's a really nice, just like basic non-superwash fingering weight wool. So if that's something you're looking for for a project, I would just really suggest that. It's yummy. And the Kelborn Girls are awesome sauce. That's my yarn. So kind of like zhuzhing into other parts of this log. Um, zhuzhing is a technical term. Y'all know that by now. State of the Falls. So you know that I live near Taganic Falls, which is the highest waterfall east of the Mississippi, the highest free falling waterfall east of the Mississippi. I hike there multiple times a week. And these videos, this little compilation you're about to watch is a bunch of different hikes that I've taken over the last few weeks. So you're gonna see a very, very rainy day. You are going to see a duck surfing, which is amazing. There was so much water. We had rains for like a week and a half, it felt like. And there was just so much water down at the fall. So you're gonna get to see it from the base, just like so much water. And um, then you'll just kind of see the greening as well that we're really coming into full on spring and it is not so um, brown and gray anymore. The green has really happened and the wildflowers have been stunning. So I'm excited to share that with you. Wasn't that adorable? Did you see the ducks just surfing down? They were so cute. They kept swimming back up the creek and then surfing down again. And we were following them as they went. And then at one point we found a baby snake and it was a very fun afternoon. Just kind of, it wasn't like a fast paced hike. It was a lean into everything and watch the ducks surf. 
kind of hike. I love those as much as I love my kind of power walks, get moving, get my heart pumping. So we, got, we have to have balance here. We definitely do. So other stuff I love to tell you about is kind of entertainment, like what I've been watching and reading and listening to. And reading wise, I finished Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Sorry, I was looking down to get names right. And I really enjoyed that book because it gave me some language and some understanding into the trans world. Um, and it was well written. I would, I would suggest it to, to those of you who are interested in learning more about the trans world. Um, then I had no idea what I wanted to read because I didn't feel like reading another Bridgerton and I didn't, I was kind of in this like, I don't know what to read. And Willow, who started working for me, my new um, studio teenager, had just finished The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. And I was like, oh, that was such a good book. And then I told her about The Great Alone, which is one of my favorite Kristen Hanna books. And she started reading The Great Alone. And then I realized when The Nightingale came out that I loved it. And I loved it so much that I like ate it up. And I didn't really necessarily process all of it. I just knew when I was talking to her that I loved it, but I couldn't actually really have a conversation about it because just saying you love something is not a conversation. <laughs> so I was like, well, you read The Great Alone. I'm going to go reread um, The Nightingale. And I realized it had probably, it had been a bunch of years since I read it. And I just slowed down and I read it again. And it was as beautiful as I remembered it, but it was actually more heart wrenching than I remember reading it the first time. I ended up not sleeping well for the last week or week and a half because I cried. I cried a lot. There, there's a lot that is very sad and real and it was very well researched and the emotions were and the character building was very well drawn out. If you haven't read The Nightingale, it is set in France during World War II, during the occupation of France during World War II. And it is about two sisters and one sister in particular who can't just like put her head down and let the war happen to her. She like has to get involved and the work that she ends up doing as she's involved, she ends up um, taking downed airmen and taking them over the Pyrenees into um, Spain so that they can get back to their countries to come back and bomb France and Germany again. And I would highly suggest it, but know that it's not an easy read. And I think it's okay for not all of our reads to be easy. That said, now I get to read a Bridgerton. So I'm gonna start Bridgerton number five. I'm really just trying to spread those out. Um, already, I read the preview last night and I'm already all in. And then what's funny is I thought I didn't have any more books to read and Bridgerton was the only book. And all of a sudden this week, there's like all of these new books out that, and I'm excited about many of them. So today I just downloaded the Anthropocene Review by John Green. He, um, John Green wrote a bunch of kind of pre-teen, teen books that I read with Bella when she was living at home back in high school. And I really loved a bunch of his work. And he has a podcast. He's a smart guy who approaches stuff with science and a good heart. And it's a series of essays about kind of being a human on this planet. So I'm listening to that in the car or like while I'm gardening and I'm already, I started it today and I'm already really enjoying it. Um, and then Alexis Hall, who wrote the, um, what did she write? The Boyfriend Material, which I read this winter and just devoured and loved, has a new book coming out June 1st. So I already pre-ordered that on Libro FM, which is like the Audible alternative and your bookstore. If you use Libro FM, you're buying audiobooks through your bookstore, so they get a portion of your sales. It's like a subscription, just like Audible is. So I use Libro FM. I'll give you guys a, I think I have an affiliate link below, or like maybe I'll get a free credit if you sign up for it, but just check it out if you're interested in Audible alternatives. But then what happened is I heard that Andy Weir, who wrote The Martian, has a new book called Project Hail Mary. I loved The Martian and I loved listening to it. So I was trying to get it on Libro FM today and it turns out that that is only available on Audible. So at some point, once I work through these other books, I think that I will just maybe 
restart my Audible membership for a little while so that I can listen to Project Hail Mary. Hail Mary. I really love listening to books while I knit, but I also love listening to books and podcasts while I garden. So I kind of just keep my phone in the pocket of my overalls and I listen to stuff and it keeps me keeps me busy and out there and like finishing my tasks. And then the final book, I know like so all of a sudden so many books to read. Stacey Abrams just came out with a new mystery called White Justice Sleeps. Stacey Abrams, if you don't know who she is, she's a Democrat from Georgia who is also a voting rights activist. And she has written many romance number um, novels under an assumed name. I haven't read any of those yet. They've been on my list for a little while. But this is the first time that she's put out a book under her real name, not a nom de plume. And so that's on my list as well. So I went from almost getting ready to ask you guys what I should read to like, kind of having my summer of reading figured out for me a little bit. Um, in terms of watching, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll know that a few weeks ago I got my second COVID shot and it knocked me on my bum for a good 24, 48 hours. And right as I was um, leaning into not feeling very well, I found out about a new rom-com called A Love Yarn that is set in New Zealand link is below. You can only find it through, there's like a YouTube premiere kind of um, preview of the movie. And then I found a place you can watch the whole thing, but you might have to do some searching if that link doesn't work for you. I know it'll work for people in the US, but it not, might not work for those of you abroad. But you guys, there's a yarn store. There's a tiny lamb named Barbara. <laughs> There's a sexy guy who's like set to inherit this entire sheep farm. There's a mill. There's like a yarn mill that's going under and the yarn store owner is going to save the mill. It's like everything a knitter would want in a I feel like escaping. I just got my second COVID shot movie. And um, it was the screenplay was actually written by a knitter and I found her on Ravelry. There was like a Ravelry thread that was talking about the movie. And she actually said she hadn't read it yet because she was worried that the knitting wasn't going to be like right, like that people were going to be crocheting when they were supposed to be knitting. But actually, it was pretty on. I think they had some good people on the set who knew about knitting and really like the writing. They clearly knew about knitting from the writing. They talked about the, the boyfriend sweater curse. It's just a good time. It's not, it's not like high intellectual content, but if you need a little escape rom-com, I would totally suggest that. Um, and then the other thing that I've been watching, and I started out not loving it, and now I'm on season four and a half, almost five, and I love it, and I've actually slowed down watching it to like make it last, is a show called Blackish. And it's set in LA. It is a black family who's kind of, um, grew up not upper middle class and has kind of become upper middle class and they deal with a lot of really pertinent real modern issues and it is also funny as all get out like laugh out loud spew your coffee um I if, if you like a comedy some people it's like a little bit canned humory and that's why I didn't like it in the beginning but now I'm I'm just all in with blackish I'm a blackish convert so Loving that. And then I also started the new Handmaid's Tale series. So I think I'm one or two episodes into the new Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. Also loving that. What we're eating, because I always tell you what we're eating, is things from the garden. The garden is happening. We've got asparagus coming in. And really what we do with our asparagus is stick it on the grill with some olive oil and some salt on it. I put it on, I finally learned that if I put it on a piece of aluminum foil, when I cook it, I don't lose half the asparagus down into the grill and we get to eat more of the asparagus. And last night we just had, we each, we grilled up all the asparagus that I harvested over the last two days. And then we put fried eggs on it and had some sourdough focaccia on the side. And it was so, so yummy. I would have that three nights a week right now um, if it was healthy to eat that many eggs. That's what I'll say about that. And um, the other thing we have a lot of is rhubarb. And last year, the year before, Max and I made apricot jam that came out a little, shall we say, soupy, like a little saucy. 
didn't quite jam up the way that it was supposed to. I think we tried to add less sugar than it needed and it just didn't like hit that pectin point of turning jammy. So we found that if you take a bunch of rhubarb and you cook it down with the apricot jam, it makes this stuff that I officially call splooge that is so good on cake and it's great on a bagel and it's good mixed into your yogurt. And so we've been just kind of cooking rhubarb down in the apricot sauce and we'll be doing that for a while. And then the other thing that I have right here is I found a recipe for rhubarb cordial on Smitten Kitchen. And so this is going to be soaking and you can see it's pink now and it was not pink actually a few hours ago. This is a bunch of gin, good gin, aviation gin, and a bunch of rhubarb for my gar from my garden and some sugar and a few pieces of orange zest, like orange peel taken off of an orange. And it is going to sit like this for a month in a warm, dark place. I'm gonna shake it up every few days. I just have to be a little careful because it's not totally sealed up at the top here. And um, then you take this gin and you strain all of the rhubarb out of it and make a cocktail out of it, I think with like a little Cointreau or something like that or Grand Marnier over ice. And I'll put that recipe link below. I'll let you guys know how it goes. I don't really tend to have a drink while I'm doing these logs, but maybe once this is done, I will do that. I could see it being good maybe with like a little seltzer to just kind of not make it quite so strong when you drink it. So that's what's happening. I love doing stuff like this, like little fun projects, like something new with something that we've been growing for many years, trying to find some new recipes. Finally, I've told you guys a lot tonight and yet not at all. I told you some about it be, I'll tell you more about it be what I'm wearing. Um, there's photos up on Ravelry to see that. And it's, it's a fun, sweet summer scarf. And I digress. I just distracted myself. The giveaway from last week. So, or sorry, last log that I did. I, um, the giveaway, I asked you guys, I forget even what I, oh, I asked you if you wanted to be a test netter. A bunch of you wanted to be a test netter. And so Jana Fung is the winner to be a test netter for third winter. I'll also end up needing a few other test netters. So I'll kind of go through for the people who said they wanted to test net and reach out to people. Since this is going to be a kit, I need to make sure the kit works for all the sizes. So those testers will probably get kits so that we make sure that the yardage is good and the gauge is good and all of that. So congratulations, Jana. And I don't know, give me some ideas for the summer sweater. You haven't really seen like any fun names you can think of for a summer sweater. That's what I wanna know about below in the comments. And I would say that you are going to win potentially this one-way skein of Gage Dye Works, which I believe is sold out right now. So this is a pretty, this is a hot commodity right here, this skein of yarn. And just let me know an idea for the sweater back here. I'd love to hear what you guys have been up to if you're reading a book and it's not one of the many books I listed here. I'd love to hear about it, what's going on in your garden, how life is going. Get your shot if you haven't gotten your shot yet. Let's all kick COVID's butt together and be able to hug each other when we see each other again, okay? Happy knitting. <laughs>